Good evening, Misfits. Welcome to your 20.5 breakdown with your friendly neighborhood Misfits movement efficiency strategy and a no bullshit approach to your open workout. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Pure Spectrum. Head to PureSpectrumCBD.com and use the code word MISFIT to save on salves and tinctures and all that good stuff. I personally use it every single morning and every single evening. Helps me stay stress-free during the day and helps me unwind at night. Uh, I really enjoy their products. Also brought to you by Sharpen the Axe. Head to SharpenTheAxeCo.com and use the code word 20.5, all spelled out. Save you some money. And to celebrate the Open, finally sort of being over, between now and Monday, you're going to be able to get a mystery accessory box with any purchase over 50 bucks. You get socks, you get wristbands, patches, stickers, all that good stuff. We'll throw all kinds of stuff into a little grab bag for you. Anybody that spends $50 or more at sharpentheaxeco.com. Um, also, just want to drop a hint here. We have a brand new kind of almost style of programming coming out November 18th. Phase one to kick off the 2020 season starts November 18th. So be ready for that at misfitathletics.com. And... Hunter would like to tell you a little bit about TeamMisfit.com, our affiliate programming yeah, arm. Yeah, TeamMisfit.com for your affiliate programming. Got a bunch of good coaches, tools, articles, free stuff out there, and then our usual competitor and GPP style affiliate programming. We will be on SugarWad very, very shortly after this podcast wraps up. Super excited to, uh, or rather, not this podcast, 20.5 wraps up. But, tonight at 9.30? Yeah, tonight at 9.30. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't message me about that. Uh, we'll be on Sugar Wad shortly after 20.5 closes. Beautiful. Word. All right. We have the Misfit Leaderboards Top 20 Ladies. We have uh, at number three, Jess Griffith. Just want to give Jess a shout out. Um, we have... Uh, she had some issues with her weights this week. Her score is not going to hold up at that 1330, but she's still there because she has crushed the open and done fantastic, and they haven't updated the score, and we wanted to mention her anyways because she's part of the family. All right. Caroline Connors, Alexis Johnson, Jess Griffith, Paige Semenza, Lauren Suver, Elena Savage, Gigi Sabatini, Hannah Hardy. Mickey Nuccio. <laughs> Diana <laughs> Lamberti. AKA I like how you Diana defer to Sherb for that. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Jennifer <laughs> McVeigh, speak, guys. Emma Weddington, Janelle Hines, Vera Valdez, Bianca Savaris, Gabby McClelland, Lizzie Bell Bruno. Booyah. Booyah. Miss Vigim Portland, Lindsay Lee, Stephanie Simmons, and Miss Vigim of Portland alumni Tia Gould in 20th. All right. A little drawing here for some free gear. Shake it up. Lady for the lady. Yeah. Uh, LOL. Gigi Sabatini. Gigi oh. Sabatini. You know what? We're going to do two. Do yeah, another one. Yeah, I'll do another one. I know. <laughs> Caroline Carter. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Lauren Suver. Lauren Suver. All right. Gigi Sabatini and Lauren Suver. Please email Jen at Misfit Athletics. Jen with two N's with your sizes and your shipping address. Gigi, I think you're all good. We'll get you a package up. Oh, I don't know. Misfit Men, <laughs> Top 20, Chandler Smith, Brandon Luckett, Nate Long, Travis Williams, Austin Spencer, Nick Matthew, Holly Holgerson, Cody Mooney, Jordan Cook, Mike Wagner, Marshall Creed, Kenneth Hart, Gio Contreras, Brody Scott, Logan Ewing, Josh Habeck, Will Carter, Brian Harris, Justin Reidelbach, and Paolo Rosil. Damn. Can't believe we didn't make it. I thought it was our week. I thought you guys week. had it. It's our week. I thought this was our week. It's funny how eating 10,000 points in one of the weeks. Gio Contreras. <laughs> Gio Contreras. Gio. OG Misfit. Please email Jen with two N's at misfitathletics.com with your size and shipping address. All right. Throwing the papers up in the air. I'll need those later. It doesn't matter. Uh, 20.5. Just got smacked in the face with a microphone here. Um, probably like I'll get smacked in the face if I attempt this workout. Very interesting workout. Partition as needed. Very Our cool. very first partition as needed, as far as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, this is different, right? This is very different. And this is a workout where strategy is everything and strategy is nothing, right? right. If you yeah. aren't good at these movements, if you're not fit and you draw this crazy matrix on the board and the numbers are flying by your head like Zach Galifianakis in The Hangover... <laughs> um, Nothing's going to change. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, and, and 
I both want to talk strategy and the fact that you still have to perform and do everything to your ability and it's the same amount of work and you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. It's a 40, 80, 120, obviously, but like the onus is still on you. This is not about your strategy. This is about getting your shit done. That being said, our personal philosophy so far, we will update you over the weekend as we see more and more of this. you got to get the muscle ups out of the way. Yes. Yeah. They will leave you. They yeah. Been- there's no reason to, it's kind of funny. We were talking about the affiliate stuff. It's completely opposite, um, but you got to get the muscle ups out of the way. I think I thought my, my initial impression was muscle ups. You use the wall balls to recover and you just go back and forth until you finish the muscle ups and then it becomes 19.1 right. until you finish. Um, I think you have to know what your strength is as far as like as far down to the detail of like a puller or a pusher. Um, we saw Caroline felt a lot more comfortable going back to a set of muscle ups after she got off the rower. Um Whereas some people are going to feel like dog shit when their pole goes away. So yeah, you this, have to know. This is, this is really, really important. So we're talking about, we know you got to get the muscle ups done. That's, that's not going to change for anybody. Right. I don't think it makes sense to have even sets through this workout to just to turn it into a 10 round, eight round, six round, whatever of all the same stuff. I also think uh, a game plan where you're stuck on certain numbers with muscle ups is also not the best idea because the best laid plans. I mean, we all know, right? Yeah. So the one thing that's very interesting, Misfit Athletics, Games Athletes, text group currently arguing nonstop about what's worse, wall ball muscle up or row muscle right. up. What does that tell you? It's different for different Everybody. people. Yeah. Me personally, row muscle up is about as bad as it gets. Like it's very much a pull pull situation for me. And then other people say muscle up isn't pull which is a unique perspective. Travis might have said that. Yeah. But like, what's important here isn't who's right, who's wrong. It's what is personally challenging for you. Luckily, this week on the blog, we had row muscle up. <laughs> um, we had 10, 8, 6. You're going to know a lot about, if you're following the Misfit Athletics blog, you're going to know a lot about what the row at a decent pace does to your muscle ups, right? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I mean, the way I've been thinking about this is very similar to some of the workouts in the past where you had big, you know, annoying chunks of movement and your experience through training allows you to determine what is an appropriate set for you. And this, my favorite way to explain this is like, when it starts to get annoying, transition. And knowing what that number is and having a flexible game plan is a huge part of this. But like, you don't want to be fighting through a ring dip on a muscle up. You don't want to be pulling on the rower at 700 calories an hour. You need to have a strategy that allows you to stay at a, <laughs> a very <laughs> consistent pace the entire time. And, you know, having just watched Austin do that, I think his strategy going into it, while he, you know, I'll call a little bit of audibles on rep schemes back and forth, was more or less how it, if I was executing this workout, how I would do it. Where you want, Do you want to let them know real quick yes. how Austin executed this so, workout? So Austin essentially turned the workout into a set of muscle ups, into 15 wall balls, back and forth until he got through the entire, all the- uh, What did uh, his muscle up sets look like? Yeah, he went 11, then he went five, then he went fours the rest of the way. So like he did like one big set and then moderate sets for the rest of the way. And what that allowed him to do is to go right over to the wall ball, pick it right up immediately, get a set of 15, take a deep breath and recalibrate himself to be able to do another decent set of muscle ups. I mean, you'd ask Austin if four muscle ups are a big deal and the answer would be no, but we all know what happens when you have metabolic demand. You're, you know that a set of four probably feels like a set of 10 when you're fresh. Right. It's much more challenging. So that allowed him to chunk away at this workout to a position so that once the muscle ups were complete, he had a very small dose of wall balls left and he was really just left to push on the rower and that allowed him to not have crazy amount of transitions once the muscle ups were done. So you know, there are an opportunity to transition a ton because you can partition however you like, but you can also get lost in the partition game if you partition this too much, which is why we wouldn't recommend something like 20 rounds of like two, four and like eight or right. four and six, excuse me. Yeah. So I like it. We got to, we got to watch Vellner go. I mean, the perfect person to go. You're talking about craziest grip strength in the game, which obviously has plenty to do with pulling former gymnast and the difference between him and Austin was basically just transitions. Yes. 100%. He pulled very hard on the rower towards the end. It was hard to tell the live feed. He looked like he was either stuck in mud or he was pulling 19,000 calories per hour. <laughs> Couldn't really tell. The, the, crowd, the crowd was clapping <laughs> at 19,000 claps per hour. It got kind of <laughs> creepy. Um, 
But that's really the difference between those two. Mm -hmm. They had a very similar strategy. Pat got on the rower, I believe, once or twice before his muscle-ups were done. It felt sort of like, uh, I don't want to do muscle-ups quite yet, so I'm going to go over to the rower and pull. But it's essentially the same. It's the same kind of strategy. And again, it's getting those muscle-ups done as fast as possible while filling in the gaps with work. I was going to say... That's the strategy what that we're really kind of going with probably was right doing now. in that instance was he wanted to give his arms a chance to flush out. Maybe his shoulders were burning from the wall balls and pulling on the rower for a little bit allowed his shoulders to relax and put some of that metabolic demand through his legs, allowing him to then go back up to the rings and finish out those dips. Because I didn't see a single muscle-up that looked all that challenging for him. And I know that muscle-ups are like his game, but like the same point, if you get yourself to the point in the muscle-ups, let's say you're 25 or 30 reps in and you're struggling through double kips on dips, you're in trouble because you still have a good chunk left and you don't want that pre-fatigue in your arms then trying to go over to wall balls. So the wall ball 10 feet or nine feet, that's not going to go well for you. The only reason I really don't like the do, going from muscle up, row muscle up. So we were talking to pull, pull or push. I just don't like the time it takes to get on the monitor, on the rower, get that first calorie going, just the, the physical act of transitioning on and off the rower into the rings. It's way easier to set up have your rings and ball right next to each other. You turn around, throw the wall ball however many times you need to back to the rings. Even Caroline, whose muscle up started to like really fatigue toward the end, we got to the point where it was like, hey, just just do one or two muscle ups, however good you feel, and then turn around and get right back to the wall and throw the wall ball a few times. Like you right. can you you can do that. That that can be your fallback plan when when they start to go away. But I don't like the transition time, I'd rather save that for once you finish the muscle ups and then you're going back and forth from that in the wall ball. And by that point, there's not, I mean, there's not even that many wall balls or calories in the workout to begin with. Never mind once you finish the right. muscle ups. Yeah. I mean, I think the transition now goes into the mental game. I was really proud of Austin when he got done because he said, you know, it was one of these workouts where your heart gets in your throat a little bit quicker than you think it might. And he said to himself, I know I can do four muscle ups mind and body might be telling me otherwise stay calm stay smooth like really try to just breathe His through good. and and do what you know you can do like that's where your history comes into play that's why we're always telling people begging people to take down as much information as they can because then when you're unsure of certain things you know what weight to put on the bar what set to do whatever it I'm is just gonna say right around the 20 rep mark is where austin decided he wasn't gonna go back to the wall and do 15 wall balls he's gonna go 10 and what that allowed him to do was stay moving quicker. Like he wasn't taking those extra pauses before the medicine ball, picking it up and going, all right, fuck, now I got to throw this thing 15 times. I mean, for all you guys out there that follow this blog, you know, as you do, 10 muscle ups are, I mean, 10, excuse me, 10 wall balls are a break. You're essentially just breathing through 10, right. 10 reps at, you know, 25, 30 seconds. And that's exactly what allowed him to do so that he can go back to the rings and repeat his sets of four. Had he tried to fight through bigger sets because he stuck to his plan, it wouldn't have gone as well. I, right. I think, and we, we kind of we always forget to talk about this how much different it is for women than men um, but a lot of so much of that has to do with size like like yep. we, we got to watch annie go and she could i don't know she could probably do 300 wall balls in a row because she has to, she's like dunking on the target <laughs> um but like you have to you also have to think all of these movements obviously except for the row are have basically a maximum speed that you can do them you can't wall ball really any faster you can't muscle up really any faster you can obviously row faster but that should tell you what you can do as far as transitions go you right. can as long as you're working you're you're good obviously we don't that doesn't that's not a license to just break these things up into as small a sets as possible but you're not going to wall ball your set of 10 wall balls in round one are not going to be faster than your set of wall balls in round 20 you right. just have to keep moving in that regard yeah, and, and one of the things we talked about right after the workout got done is you, you essentially have that double transition the whole time when you're, when you're going back and forth. You have the transition from the rings to the wall or the rings to the rower and then back. And you have to decide on which side do you gather yourself. I personally think it's pre-rings, right? You jump up Always. weird on yeah. the rings and you knock them in a weird direction. You don't grab as well with one hand or the other. That can be a serious issue. I think you need to be on absolute fucking robot autopilot. The second you drop down, you go over and you start doing your wall balls. And then you think about breathing. And then you think about getting yourself prepared. When you drop it, maybe it is that, you know, froning walk, a little bit of an arm shake, that sort of thing. But you can't have those transitions 
slowed down in both places because right. you're insinuating that I can't do wall balls right now. And I mean, that's, there's, that's no, there's no excuse with, for with that. Austin the entire time when he when he was getting off the rings, I was ushering him over to the ball and saying, "Pick that ball up. You're not going to fail a wall ball." And let's let's pick a side to take a, a transition on. You cannot have it before and after. So let's get the ten wall balls done. Then you can take a second if you want to chalk your hands or catch your breath. And you know, Austin's already talking about potentially taking a, a retake on this workout and. If he does something simple like take care of one of those transitions on either side, he buys himself a minute, and then we're talking about all right, he's right in the same time domain Pat was, which is you know, going to be a world class time. So, it, it, you, know, you essentially get to decide one or the other, and you have to figure out which one that works best for you. And I would say it's the one that gives you the most trouble, which has the most metabolic demand. In this case, would be the muscle up. Right. Talking about movement efficiency now, really quickly. Um, bunch of different categories of of athletes that are going to be doing this workout, and we'll try to hit a few different groups here but when you're on the rower or you're on the wall that knee extension like like so many people get obsessed with hip extension and what that can do in your wall ball is that can cause you to come forward come up on your toes you know kind of go towards the wall and then have to reset yeah that knee extension driving your heel into the floor and really closing that knee angle like really kind of snapping that open is so important on both the rower and the wall ball because we as athletes I love how I say we sometimes Gets really get to choose <laughs> the leg drive and the breathing. We get to decide how hard we want to go. We get to dig and go to those places. The muscle ups are, it's just not the case. The muscle ups, you know, as efficiently you can do them, the better it's going to be, the less, you know, arms it's going to be. But once those go, there's going to be an issue there. So you have to make the wall balls and the rowing about your lower half. You really do. And what's, what's really nice about that point is that you're right. They're both lower half movements, but they're actually opposing if you can convince yourself to to use your squat you know your warm your squat up well and get into your anterior half of your body when you're squatting right. and then you can focus on the posterior part of your body when you're rowing you now have two opposing systems that aren't necessarily fatiguing each other as much as if you're both quad dominant yeah. in your wall ball and on your rower which is something i told to austin probably on his second or third row and he's like that helped me a bunch because i was thinking about leg drive and i really was like i need to hinge my hips here because there's gonna my, be some bastardized rowing oh, yeah. that's going to be a good decision to make oh absolutely yeah. you're going to be reaching you're going to have a rounded back you're going to be using your hamstrings and your glutes a little bit more mm -hmm. it's not going to be the way that a rowing coach would teach you it might but, puke <laughs> but that's because the front half of your body's essentially dead at that point in the workout yeah mm -hmm. um really important there with the muscle ups we have a ton of resources on our youtube channel when it comes to the muscle ups um i think the bit i think the biggest thing is using your momentum in the dip like we've talked about it right. a ton at camp. Once you turn over, whatever your legs do make them underneath keep doing that. you, <laughs> make them continue to do that. Use that free potential energy that you have to get yourself up and out of that dip. Don't hang out above there any Don't longer than you have Stop to. Stop there. Let your legs drop. Drive the knees back yeah. up through. And, it's a problem. And for the love of God, do not risk a muscle up unless it's like maybe that last one or something like that last right one to say. Total, yeah. last total one not right the set and that's why these the whole idea of not being obsessed with what your sets are because let's say yeah. it doesn't go perfect and you have one or two left you don't got to go over and do your 15 wall balls or your x amount of calories however you've decided to divide it up you need to do enough so that you can get done you you know what i mean you go yeah. over you do seven wall balls doesn't matter you go back over and you get your muscle ups done. When you ask anybody, what would you care about what you did? Better time or you stuck to your plan? Everyone's going to say better time. So right. like you have to have, be able to call that audible when necessary. Yeah. Um, the, the kind of out of left field thing, the hot take here is going to be um, most of the muscle up drills that we see. This is a little bit more now for the affiliate or the hatchet athlete. Most of the muscle up drills that we see, people are pulling the rings to their hips and their torso is parallel with the ground. Um don't do that. <laughs> that is like the furthest distance you could possibly be when you're laid back like this. If you're listening to this, I'm saying you're laid way, way, way back. You're Except, gonna make yeah, it all floor. the way up through. As you get better at muscle ups, as you watch better athletes do muscle ups, you see more and more of their torso being pitched just a little bit more upright as they're going through. And that turnover is not as crazy. So when you're going through this and you're practicing and getting these drills, if your hip is like higher than your head and your feet are, are way down. That's just such a tough position to get to or to get from yep. all the way back through over the rings. 
So it's good to practice that hip extension. We like the hip extension, but the hip extension to chest through is a fluid movement. It's no different than we can't pull the bar really high, wait a second, and then pull our elbows through. Pulling through a barbell on a clean is all one motion. Yep. Your elbows are coming through as soon as they can, and you're catching in that position and going up. That's no different than the way that it needs to be with the muscle up. Yes, that big hip extension needs to be there, but it's literally lifting your torso as well, which needs to come back through. So I know that that's kind of a tough pill to swallow. A lot of people spend, I mean, we've, we've, we we've see seen it all, yeah, time, we see yeah. it all the time. People spend, you know, 10, 20 minutes a week driving their hips up to that point. And that's nice to kind of understand what's going on there, but you need to look forward. It's just a drill that got be, taken yeah, one step too far. Exactly. You need to be staring forward. If you're staring backwards, that's going to be, that's going to be a little <laughs> bit of an issue. It's going to be hard to get back through into that position. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a really unique workout. Um, we will be, you know, coming through with, you know, movement efficiency tips and strategy tips. We will watch countless videos and, and people go through this. And if we decide we have a differing opinion, a different opinion, we'll let you guys know. Um, I don't think it's going to be anything different than get your muscle ups done. Um, but how you do that could change with a little bit of nuance. And again, don't let someone else's plan dictate how you're going to do this. Again, if you've done a row muscle up couplet or something similar to this recently, take that information and think about it a little bit. Um, take a separate sort of thing. Take a look at the movement standards. Make sure if you're a games athlete, you know you need to set up two cameras and like read all that shit. Uh, especially with the between the wall ball target, it's a lot of setup. There's a lot of logistical requirements. Do that. Do that shit before you even start warming up, so that once you are warm, you're you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about that whole setup. The only thing I want to have is, is trust your training. Like trust what you've done. Trust the work that you've put in. Realize that you've had these experiences. Like you were just saying, you have these experiences. Don't go to the point of failure. Go to the point where it starts to feel annoying and then transition. Like we said earlier in this podcast, you can find a way to stay moving and get reps. You're doing all right. If you're stopped dead doing nothing, that's when you're in trouble. So find a way to stay moving. Whether that's, you know, you know, like, Someone might decide that they want to row before, you know, mix in a set of rowing in the middle of their muscle, uh, wall balls and muscle up a uh, couplet. That's okay. As long as you stay moving, don't get caught yeah, stopping do dead. Yeah, don't get caught stopping, get stopped dead. Find a way to stay moving. And get your muscle ups done as fast yeah, as you can. Yeah. <laughs> don't leave any, don't leave any muscle ups for that. Like that final push should be about, can I hold on to the wall ball or can I pull harder on the You want to leave 10 for the end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get 30 done as fast as you can and then, and then leave some on there. And then yeah. around. So again, just a, a quick recap, if, you, if you're looking to figure out exactly what we're saying for this workout, um, we, like, we like the wall ball muscle up couplet for a lot of people in this workout. Some people would prefer the rowing. We're also okay with a triplet being mixed in there, but I think every other movement needs to be the muscle up. We got to get them done as fast as we can, and then you just got to push hard. You know, I think bigger chunks makes a little bit more sense. I don't think adding extra transitions once your muscle ups are done are good, so... Yeah, I like, the, I like the muscle up wall ball, muscle up row thing for people who aren't aren't sure. They know that one or the other vertically completely inclined. fries out. Yeah. yeah, or the vertically gifted. Yes. I'm also fucking just fired up to see people row their fucking ass off at the end of this workout. I'm so excited to see that. That's, I'll still to me, be trying so, to get my muscle up. So it's I don't know so what you're exciting. About. I cannot wait to see that fucking pain face at the end of these workouts. That's, you know, you do all, the, all that work all year long on all those machines and you suffer and you suffer and you suffer. It sucks too because you know you can do it. You always and know it's there. now you have a chance to show it. You have a chance to show how hard you've been working on those goddamn machines all year long. <laughs> now it's time to fucking send it. Go do it. All right. That was 20.5 breakdown. Thank you to our show sponsors, Sharpen the Axe and Pure Spectrum. Sharpen the Axe, code.com. Use the code word 20.5, all spelled out. Spend 50 bucks or more. Get that free mystery box filled with all kinds of accessories, pure spectrum, cbd.com. Use the code word misfit and be ready for phase one at misfitathletics.com, November 18th. I will see you tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday and Monday all over the socials. Let's go. Peace.